right, for this last part of the lab, we're looking at the activities, and this first one is a picture of Grand Canyon Village, basically the rim of the, the south rim of the Grand Canyon, and we're looking at the Kaibab limestone, which is a top unit here in the in the Grand Canyon. And uh, this Kaibab limestone has some features. It looks like there's some um, tabular planar cross beds in here. And note that the angles here, if you measure it with a protractor, they're not that steep. I think I asked you to do that. And also note that there's some shelled organisms, some uh, brachiopods uh, here and a, a horn coral, right? So it certainly had to be shallow water. Looks like a, a, this might be another type of brachiopod here. And then some crinoids here, right? So some fossils, shelled organisms. So now we're looking at the questions Based on the, the foreset angle here for the crossbeds, draw an arrow on here to show the flow direction. And then, oh, I guess I already decided these were tabular planar crossbeds. You can put that on there. Oh, you do use a protractor measure, see what you get for the, remember, um, uh, you want to put the bullseye, the horizontal and the bullseye here, and then measure the angle up, you know, on the protractor. So um, try to work that one out. And then, um, Obviously, they're going to have to be water currents. They're, they're similar to the, the lab, the part of the lab we discussed right here. So they're kind of these river or sea. In this case, we're looking at a shallow sea here, right, for um, for these Kaibab limestone uh, cross bedding in shallow water. And then um, based on the shallow marine environment description, so um, read about the description. Um, what conditions are necessary for the, oh, yeah, so there's some very specific points I made. I might have mentioned it in my earlier video for this lab. So when you're looking at the shallow marine environment up here, uh, read this part about limestones here and you want to add that to your answers down here. All right, and then uh, obviously this is Permian time. And so based on the descriptions and the pictures you see here, uh, describe the, what the environment was like, the, the ecosystem, you know, the condition, maybe the water depth, uh, um, you know, elaborate here. So you can fill, fill out that question there. For question seven here, we're looking at um, more on the, based on the fossils. So I guess you're going to say more about the fossils there. For activity 1.2, we're looking at trackways, a modern uh, trackway here with, with mud cracks, right? And then a fossil, it uh, looks like a, some sort of dinosaur fossil, Coelophysis, one of the first dinosaurs, actually. Yeah, Triassic. So the dinosaurs really started in the Triassic. And so read about these, and you could probably answer these questions pretty straightforward. Um, uh, for this last question, I think there was one here I wanted to, um, about paleo up direction. Let's see. Uh, yeah, paleo up. So remember, uh, here uh, in this one, the, the mud cracks are filled, right? They're filled with. So, yeah, so think about the whether this is upside down or, or, or right side up. Now for this next section, we're looking at, or actually one point three at some marine deposits. Uh, here are some ancient Pennsylvanian, 290 million year old deposits here in Kansas and with some fossils. And then the modern seafloor off of uh, Cape Cod up here in, in the North, North New England close, coast there, right? So these, this activity is pretty straightforward. You can answer these questions based on the photos. And again, reading about the different marine environments up in the introduction up to the lab. For this next section, this one's a little uh, more involved where you're looking at this Permian strata in Kansas, and you're just going to describe the paleo environment, right? So remember, we want to start from the bottom and work our way up. And then as we answer these questions, we, we want to describe that environment uh, represented by the rocks and the descriptions here. Then we want to Put a check mark whether it's a uh, deeper ocean um, muddy bay transitional um, or maybe an evaporating bay like a lagoon type setting or maybe one of those uh, puddle peat bogs in a swamp or terrestrial right so when we go down here when the first for the first one the first unit number one gray silt so it's gray it's, that's only it's reducing conditions right the color is telling me it's reducing low oxygen conditions mud cracks so it's drying out right so probably uh, most uh, uh, muddy land where ferns grew mud cracks yeah so that's probably a 
you know, some sort of pot, and then you got the peat there. So that's probably a, a pottle environment. Both of these are kind of a, a, a swampy region here. So you can see that they checked mark the land for the ferns, so kind of that swamp. And then uh, the second one here is uh, the peat bog or swamp there. So land, and so they kind of checked those two off for you already. They've done that. For the third one, here we have some skeletal limestone, which is probably a coquina, cross bedding, shallow water, right? So there's some clam fossils. So here, here you want to describe uh, the, the bivalves, uh, the fact that there's cross bedding. So it's probably going to be uh, some shallow marine environment. Uh, remember the cross bedding here, there has to be currents, and the currents don't really affect water very deep, so it's going to be certainly less than 200 meters. So here we're going to probably peak, um, pick, um, uh, what's that say, um, ocean marine, yeah, so muddy bay estuary. No, we're, we're in the marine environment here because we're, we're certainly in the, you know, we got these, these this limestone forming. So probably, you might want to add here um, neuritic waters, shallow waters. Now we got gray, silty mudstone with abundant gypsum. Oh, so there's some evaporites going. So remember, gypsum's evaporite uh, layers and crystals. So, so this is more like that. That um, so we got gray again, reducing waters, uh, uh, evaporation, evaporite. So probably some sort of evaporating bay there, right? Um, muddy bay. No, more of an evaporating bay. The fact that we see gypsum. That's you want to check check mark over here. Then as we go up to this next layer, we have red and gray silty mudstone with, with raindrops. So obviously, we got to be on land. Fossil roots, so plants, mud cracks. Start, yeah, so that's going to be land, right? So describe this um, uh, the, the environment, probably some, some coastal land, uh, gray silty mudstone. Yeah, so, you know, not a whole lot of nutrients, although there, there are some plants in here. So the environment here was probably some, some grassland, right? Maybe some grassland near the shore. And then as we go up here to uh, Grace Muslim and Shale Animal Burrows, fossil clams, fossil plant fragments, and current ripple marks. So again, shallow water. Um, this is probably a good example like of what you would find in the San Francisco Bay. So this is going to be more of our, of our um, muddy bay estuary over here, right? Uh, so something in that, that region there because I don't see any um, gypsum or anything in there. And now I'm back to so it's a limestone. So I'm back in the marine environment, right? So anyways, make the description here and then this last one will be marine environment. So you can see in this case, sea level is fluctuating, right? So we're seeing, um, you know, one thing that you might want to try to do is try to figure out where there are transgressions and regressions. Because here we're definitely seeing sea level rising between here, this uh, gray silty mudstone. So that's a transgression. But as we go from this marine environment to the to the evaporating bay and the land, this is definitely a regression over here, right? So we can document that change in sea level. All right, this next part, uh, other bedding. So there's, you know, here I talk about paleo current directions, these, these tool marks, soul marks, load class. So we've already talked about the oscillating ripples and the, and the directional asymmetric ripples, right? But these um, soul marks is where like let's say there's a boulder or some sort of log or something flowing down the river and it hits the bottom of the river channel, it's gonna make a splay mark. And usually that splay mark is gonna open up in the direction of current flow. And a good example is if you would see paint spilling on the road, like a, like a contractor is carrying paint and the paint can falls off. When it hits the road, it's gonna splay out in the direction that the truck was moving in, right? So you see the traffic is moving toward us here. And so when that paint can fell off, it's going to spray out in the direction of current flow. So in this direction here, um, we're seeing the, the direction of current flow. So that's what we mean by soul marks or tool marks, right? And then this section here, I was talking about color. You can see that when you're looking at gray, um, uh, greenish gray, black, that's the reducing conditions, right? So kind of that's how I was using the colors there to tell me about whether it's oxidizing or reducing conditions. Now for the next several pictures, you're gonna be looking at the features. In fact, these are alluvial fans, right? 
and you're going to be discussing um, the alluvial fans in the Playa Lake here, right, for Death Valley. So this is looking back toward the west from Death Valley, and this is the Panamint Range here. This next one here, uh, these are some sort of ripples, and note that they're steeper on one side and shallower on the other. So you can say something a little bit about what's going on there with these ripples. For this one here, we're looking at chert and shale. So chert right away, and the fact that it's in these ribbons or, or um, layers means that it must be must have been pelagic, deep waters, right? So up in here, uh, when I talk about the marine environment in the table, I talk about these ribbons, right? Ribbon chert. So read about what's going on there. And then as we go along here, um, so obviously this is some sort of cross bedding but see is it is it planar tabular planar or is it trough cross bedding right and then based on where these form you can suggest in a region where this you know what this was in the past right and here this actually this looks more like that tabular cross bedding here and it's more um yeah they're all yeah, well, anyways, you can figure this one out. This is a pretty good Navajo sandstone, very famous cross uh, sandstones. And then, oh, we got some sort of ripple there. So uh, you can deal with that picture there. And then, um, yeah, channel fills. So there must have been some sort of fluvial environment here, right? So think about what's going on with that one. And then for this one, oh, yeah. So here, if you, hopefully you can see it. See how it's coarser particles here? They find up, so try to figure out. Um, let's see, blah, 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 blah. you know what? What I didn't, I what I probably should have added here is is can you relate these to um, Bama sequences, right? So this one looks like the A and that's a B, but I don't see the C or D, right? So these are like the Bama sequences here uh, that they're kind of depicting in this picture. And so remember, we're going back to our our image of Bama sequences up over here. There it is, so A and B. All right, and then I think that's it. All right, well, we'll stop here for now, and hopefully this helps.